we would like to welcome everyone to join us on this virtual tour of Naval Station Norfolk, the world's largest naval station and home to the United States Navy's Atlantic Fleet. The Naval Station covers 6,200 acres and is home to 13 piers and an 8,000-foot runway supporting 61 ships, 187 aircraft, and 18 squadrons, all of which you will catch a glimpse of today. There are currently 56,000 active-duty Navy personnel and 17,000 civilians employed on the Naval Station, putting the annual payroll at $7.4 billion. We will first look at Escort Row. When a strike group is deployed, the nucleus of the strike group or battle group is the aircraft carrier. It is escorted by several other smaller ships that are equipped to defend her for any circumstance or harm. These ships include anti-air, anti-surface, and even anti-submarine warfare. These ships are not limited to just escorting and defending aircraft carriers. Navy warships execute many missions to include counter-drug ops, search and rescue, anti-piracy, anti-terrorism, and humanitarian missions globally. If something goes wrong anywhere, we are there. A fun fact about our piers, the last two piers are number 12 and 14 because the Navy does not use the number 13 because it is considered unlucky. Piers 12 and 14 are primarily used for aircraft carriers. And we couldn't finish talking about our waterfront assets without talking about our aircraft carriers. These nuclear-powered ships, which are three and a half football fields long and a half football field wide, and the flight deck covers four and a half acres. While deployed, it carries 75 to 90 aircraft, has a crew of 6,000 sailors, and has eight galleys that serve 21,000 meals a day. Aircraft carriers can operate for a period of 14 years without refueling. However, it takes three years to refuel. To put United States naval power into perspective, we have more aircraft carriers than the rest of the world combined. We have 10 aircraft carriers in the entire United States Navy, and here in Norfolk alone, we have six. We are now going to the historical portion of the tour, which is the site of the Jamestown Exposition. In 1907, 10 years before the Naval Station was built, the World Fair was held here. Expo planners asked every state to construct a house that would represent their state. 21 states participated, but only 13 of these homes still stand today. These homes now serve as homes to our senior military officers, one star and above, and are located on Dillingham Boulevard, which is more commonly known as Admiral's Row. We will now touch on some very important memorials that we have here on base. First is the Iowa Point Memorial. In 1989, the USS Iowa's gun turret exploded, killing 47 sailors. The Navy planted 47 shrubs in the shape of an anchor to honor the sailors that lost their lives. The ammunition you see is the same size as the ammunition that exploded and is painted blue and gold to signify that it was a training accident. Next is the USS Cole Memorial. In 2000, while in Port Yemen, a small boat detonated a bomb alongside the coal, killing 17 sailors. The memorial consists of three sections. The main plaza of the memorial contains three 10-foot monoliths that represent the colors of the American flag. Encircling the monoliths are 17 low-level markers that represent the victims of the bombing. Three plaques are placed by the monument. The two outside pillars contain the names of the sailors killed during the bombing, and the center pillar contains the USS Cole emblem and an inscription that reads, and lasting tribute to their honor, courage, and commitment. Along the path to the memorial are 28 pine trees that represent the 17 victims and the 11 children who lost their parent during the bombing. As mentioned about the beginning naval station, Norfolk has a fully operating airfield, Chambers Field. Chambers Field was previously known as Naval Air Station Norfolk and had a separate chain of command. In 1999, both the Naval Station and Naval Air Station combined to simply become Naval Air Station Norfolk. Chambers Field is home to approximately 188 aircraft from multiple squadrons to include the Marine Medium Tilt Rudder Squadron, three MH-53 Echo Sea Dragon Squadrons, five E-2C Hawkeye Squadrons, eight MH-60 Sierra Nighthawk Squadrons, and one C-2 Greyhound Squadron. Behind the buildings on your right, you will see the E-2C Hawkeyes. The E-2C is a twin-engine, five-crew-member, high-wing turboprop aircraft with a 24-foot diameter radar, Rotodome, attached to the upper fuselage. The Hawkeye provides all-weather airborne early warning, airborne battle management, and command and control functions for the carrier strike group and joint force commander. They are made up of over 70% electronics, making them one of the Navy's most expensive aircraft. If you look far past the E-2Cs, you will see the Navy-operated Air Mobility Command, often referred to as the AMC Terminal. 
This command provides airlift support for four deployed units and joint warfighter exercises, as well as a multitude of overseas bases with mail, provisions, and supplies to include movement of military, civilians, and family members. On average, the AMC terminal executes over 3,000 airlifts to include 640 USN, USAF Expeditionary Force, and Special Assignment Airlift Missions transporting 70,000 service members, 19,000 tons of high-priority combat cargo, and 8,000 Space A passengers. To your right is the Aviation Survival Training Command, where 1,900 sailors come each year. The Naval Aviation Training Program consists of two major elements, Aviation Physiology Training and Aviation Water Survival Training Program. The purpose of aviation physiology training is to familiarize designated and prospective flight crews with the physiological hazards associated with flight. We are now approaching Eli Memorial Park, which is named after the father of naval aviation who made the first successful ship-to-shore flight. The first on the pedestal is the E-2 Charlie Hawkeye, which we discussed earlier. The helicopter with the 601 on it is a MH-53 Super Stallion, which is used for airborne mine countermeasures. The one in the far back that looks like it's smiling is the CH-46 Sea Knight, which is a medium lift assault helicopter that can carry up to 22 people. The smaller helicopter in the back is a SH-2 Sea Sprite, which is a ship-based helicopter with anti-submarine and anti-surface threat capability. The one with the E and Trident written on it is the SH-3 Sea Knight, which is used to detect, classify, track, and destroy enemy submarines. The small green helicopter in the front is the UH-1 Iroquois, also known as the Huey, was used for search and rescue missions. The plane with the skull and crossbones is the F-14 Tomcat, which was a carrier-based plane that can track up to 24 targets at a time and has been decommissioned and replaced by the F-18 Hornet. Last but not least is the A-6 Intruder, which is also carrier-based and is a medium attack bomber that requires refueling shortly after taking off because it uses 50% of its fuel during takeoff it has been replaced by the F-18 Hornet. The white building with maroon stripes on your right hand side is the Flatley Center, which is where pilots go to receive flight training with flight simulators. These simulators can replicate anything from landing an aircraft on a carrier at night to flying during high winds and rain. The large body of water on your right is the Hampton Roads Harbor, which is the world's largest ice free harbor due to its high salt content and shaped in currents. During the Civil War, this was the site of the Battle of the Ironclads in 1862 between the USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia. The hangars you see on your left are the newer style hangar bays, which we are building to withstand a Category 3 hurricane. When Hurricane Isabel came in 2003, it did a great deal of damage to buildings on the base. We are about to go through buildings U-20 and U-16. These are our newly renovated World War II style barracks. In 1945, women were brought in the Navy as yeomans, which is our secretaries, and HMs, which is our corpsmen's. Females were on one side and males were on the other side. To your left is the Navy Exchange Complex. It is the world's largest naval exchange and consists of a Chili's, movie theater, tax-free commissary, and mall. On your left is our dental clinic and Sewell's Point Medical which handles the majority of medical needs. This concludes our tour of Naval Station Norfolk. On behalf of Naval Station Norfolk's commanding officer, Captain David Dees, thank you for touring the world's biggest and best naval installation.